Here's what's happening now. If you are expecting somebody home for dinner, you may have to nuke up their dinner because it is going to be a slow go on the roads. More on that coming up. Karen. Also, first of all, defending herself, a former deputy chief with the Detroit police steps forward to deny accusations of bribery. Kim. Actor Mark Wahlberg spent his morning here in Royal Oak visiting with children at Beaumont Hospital. But I'll explain what he was talking about that could change the future of Metro Detroit. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, the radar is lit up all over Metro Detroit today, and that could mean a really slow, frustrating ride home. But of course, we want you to stay safe, so let's bring in Ben Bailey, keeping a close eye on all that rain. Ben. Yeah, Karen, it's not going to be pretty, but let's start with the good news. We're not getting the worst of it. That's going to be out in West Michigan, but there are going to be plenty of spots to pick up a lot of rain as we get through the next couple days. In fact, what you're looking at right now is generally light rain, but it's persistent, and we're going to see this pick up in intensity. You can already start to see a couple of those colors go from green to yellow. Uh, that's right around uh, Michigan Avenue there south of Ann Arbor. But we will continue to watch the intensity pick up at least to the evening hours. Then it's probably going to taper off just a little bit as we get into tonight. So the breakdown looks like this. Definitely wet at least to the evening hours. Once we get past 12 o'clock, things start to become a little bit uh, with more breaks in them. But our coldest air of the season is going to be rolling in late this week. We'll look at that in your seven day forecast. And even as we get into next week, there's not going to be much help temperature wise. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. We do have a breaking news situation about the heartbreaking tragedy on I-75 in Genesee County. A young father was killed last week when someone threw a rock onto the car that he was riding in. The Genesee County prosecutor and sheriff just finished a news conference. Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom with the very latest on the investigation. Kim. Yeah, that he did. Karen, good afternoon. The Genesee County prosecutor David Layton has charged five teenagers with second degree murder, among other charges. During the news conference, he made it clear this rock throwing incident was no prank. It was fatal for this man, 32 year old Kenneth White of Mount Morris. He was hit in the head Wednesday night while driving home from work under the Dodge Road overpass in Vienna Township. Investigators weighed the rock and it, that hit him and found that it weighed about six pounds and it hit the vehicle going 70 miles an hour. The defendants range in age from 15 to 17 years old, but will all be charged as adults. Genesee County's sheriff says this is a tragedy for everyone involved. At the end of the day, nobody wins. The young people are charged criminally. A young boy lost his father. And all of the families are left grieving. All five teenagers will be arraigned tomorrow morning. Four are in custody at a juvenile detention center and the oldest is in the county jail. Our coverage of this story, Karen, continues tonight at five with more information about the suspects and more details about that investigation that were just released just a few moments ago. Until then, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. Well, most defendants in high profile criminal cases don't face TV cameras willingly, but this former deputy chief at the Detroit Police Department stepped forward today to deny accusations of bribery. Celia Washington is accused of taking cash in a case connected to police towing in Detroit today. Washington proclaimed her innocence. It goes without saying that I am deeply disappointed uh, with the allegations that have been made against me, though the facts will come out in court, and I look forward to that encounter. I look forward to defending my honor. I look forward to defending my integrity and to clear my name. Washington looks to clear her name on the two count indictment alleging bribery and conspiracy against her. She will be arraigned tomorrow. Well, Local 4's Rod Maloney had some questions for Washington and her attorney. We'll hear from him tonight at 5. America's First Lady came to Metro Detroit today to kick off the week of inclusion during National Bullying Prevention Month. First Lady Melania Trump stopped at Orchard Lake Middle School in West Bloomfield to visit with the students and encourage them to make new friends during lunchtime rather than gather in exclusive groups. When I walked in, I saw tables only girls, tables only boys, and you know, maybe we get together and just become friends. You agree? Yeah. Yeah. 
enthusiastic yeses from the crowd. The First Lady appeared to make some new friends for herself when she visited the students in the classrooms and right there in the lunchroom. She also posed for many pictures with those students. Police are still sorting through exactly what happened in a car accident that put three teenagers and an off-duty Detroit police officer in the hospital. It happened around 7 a.m. at the intersection of Woodward and Seven Mile. Witnesses say that the off-duty officer made an illegal left turn to go north on Woodward when he was hit by the principal driving with three of his teenage students. The teens are in stable condition this afternoon. The officer is in temporary serious condition. Federal judge has given the Flint City Council one more day to decide on a drinking water supply for the city. Federal District Judge David Lawson had given the council a deadline of today to decide on a long-term water source. The crisis involving lead and Flint's water system began back in 2014 when the city switched to the Flint River as its source. It now gets water from the Great Lakes Water Authority. Flint's mayor wants a 30-year contract with the authority. Council wanted more time to study the issue. Today, the judge set a new deadline of tomorrow for council to make that decision. President Trump will head to Capitol Hill tomorrow to push his tax reform plan. Today, he's trying to ease fears that your 401k might be in jeopardy. There have been reports Congress is considering new limits on tax-free contributions. Right now, people under 50 years old can save up to $18,000 a year. The New York Times said lawmakers were thinking about lowering that number to as little as $2,400 a year. But today, the president tweeted, quote, There will be no change to your 401k. This has always been a great and popular middle-class tax break that works, and it stays. Closer to home today, one of Hollywood's most powerful leading men becoming more and more involved in the future of Metro Detroit. Look more as Kim DiGiulio caught up with actor Mark Wahlberg, who's transformed into a businessman with a heart of gold. With all of the success of Wahlburgers downtown, Mark Wahlberg has announced that he's bringing a new location to Royal Oak. And what better way to get acclimated with the Royal Oak community than going to Beaumont Hospital and visiting with children. Meet Molly Pratt. She's been battling cancer for three years, but today she was all smiles when her mom woke her up from her nap. I'll wake up for Mark Wahlberg. That's okay. <laughs> A little lack of sleep is okay. <laughs> he spent about an hour meeting with the kids, handing out gifts and taking pictures. You always got to give back. I mean, you know, I've been so blessed and fortunate, and so if I can kind of put a smile on somebody's face, uh, let them know that we're praying for them. Hopefully tomorrow, huh? Molly spent the entire weekend in the hospital, a total bummer. But Mark's visit changed her perspective on her stay. Being in here and having to like wear an oxygen mask all the time, it's like, oh man, I just want to go home. And then like, I don't know, seeing that kind of makes like my stay like worthwhile. The new Wahlburgers location will go right next to Beaumont Hospital at 13 Mile and Woodward. So it's perfect for hospital patients, visitors and workers. To be able to feed all these great men and women uh, and families that are coming in, getting checked up, any of those things, coming to visit family members. Of course, Mark Wahlberg is no stranger to the area. He's filmed movies here, opened up a restaurant here. He loves it here. Detroit knows how much I love him. The actor may be a Boston native, but his pick for the new Amazon headquarters is right here in Detroit. To get Amazon to come to Detroit, okay? Everybody, start making videos, post them, send them to Jeff Bezos personally. I'll put in a call. I don't know if I get him on the phone, but I'll try. Reporting from Royal Oak, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. All right, thank you very much, Kim and Mark Wahlberg. Still ahead, a Hollywood heartthrob, ready to say I do, and a pop princess gives one couple a wedding memory they will never forget. Stick around for those trending stories, plus Dr. McGeorge is here. Hi, Doc. Hey, Karen, you know, in good health, we know the waiting room at the pediatrician's office is full of germs. We'll see the changes that doctors are being urged to make and what parents can do, too. A first new number show how bank fees seem to be really unfair. Some of you are paying much more than other people what you can do to fight back. And don't forget the only debate in the Detroit mayor's race is this Wednesday night right here on Local 4. Mayor Mike Duggan and State Senator Coleman Young, the second face-off at 8 p.m. Local 4 is proud to host this debate along with the Detroit News and Detroit Public Television. We will be right back. 
No one likes bank fees, but it seems the lowest income families are also paying the highest penalties. A new study found people with income below $30,000 a year pay about $31 a month in fees. On average, people in other income brackets pay just $9. Nearly 40% of people making below 30 grand don't have bank accounts at all because they can't afford those fees. The message here, shop around. Most people stay with the same bank for like 16 years, so even though they could be paying less somewhere else, make sure to always check the competition. In good health, an inevitable part of a child's visit to the pediatrician will probably involve the waiting room. And today, there are some new recommendations for avoiding germs while you wait. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with those details. Well, Karen, the new policy guidelines are actually from the American Academy of Pediatrics, and they're really urging pediatricians to make their waiting rooms safer during cough and cold season. In particular, the recommendations include mandatory flu shots for all office staff, stocking waiting rooms with alcohol-based sanitizers and masks, adding signs about cough and sneeze etiquette, removing difficult to clean teddy bears and other plush toys. And they also recommend that offices take special precautions to protect particularly infectious susceptible populations like immune compromised or cystic fibrosis patients by taking them back directly to an exam room as quickly as possible. No, I'm pretty lucky. Our pediatrician's office actually has two rooms, one for sick and one yeah. for healthy. But some people don't have that. What if you right. have a sick child and you go, what should a parent do? Well, there's a couple things. It's not crazy to ask your pediatrician or ask the office staff to just take your cell phone number and go outside for a short walk outside the office or just wait in your own car. The other thing I would recommend is bring your own toys Don't that are easy to clean. Okay. Don't rely on the toys in the office. But, you know, the sick and well waiting room, sometimes they do get a little mixed so sometimes it might be better to step out. All right, good advice. Thank you, Doc. Appreciate it. Well, we do have an update on the auction of this letter from a passenger on the doomed Titanic. A Minnesota businessman wrote his mother on the Titanic using Titanic stationery the day before the ship ran into an iceberg. The letter was actually found on his body. He was one of the 1,500 people who died. This weekend, the letter sold for more than $166,000, setting a new record. Ben is back and he is preparing all of us for kind of a nasty ride home yeah. this evening. Yeah, <laughs> Give yourself time. Can't even say that we really need the rain because we've no. got plenty of it uh, in the last several days, but uh, we are going to be getting it and getting plenty of it uh, for the next few. Uh, Fort Life radar is all green pretty much uh, everywhere out there. Most of this stuff is light. We've seen a couple spots where it started to intensify, but there's really not a whole lot of difference uh, across the area between the amount and the intensity of this rainfall. You see a couple little uh, heavier blobs there showing up in southern Livingston County and north of 696 in western Oakland County. But when you get south of the state line, uh, there's really no breaks in this. It looks like we're going to be seeing more moisture being pumped in as we get through the evening hours. Things do start to taper off a little bit as we head into the overnight, but at least we're not getting this. Um, it is much heavier here on the west side of the state, and it looks like that intensity is starting to pick up. They'll also see that rain last a little bit longer, but we're still going to get our share. In fact, when you look at totals here between now and when the system actually leaves, that's on Wednesday, there are going to be some places that actually get upwards of an inch. We should be uh, right at that mark in Detroit. Clinton Township also at an inch. Further to the south, there will be more spots in that one inch range, and that's out there in Lenaway County. One inch plus in Tecumseh, out Morency, and Onstead. Western edge of our west zone, you'll probably see one inch, but everybody else is going to be pretty close. Again, there's not going to be a whole lot of variation in these numbers as we finish out the uh, middle of the week. North zone temperatures, or I should say uh, rainfall amounts, are anywhere between a half and three quarters of an inch until you get down here towards M59, and those numbers go up just a little bit. Now let's start talking timing. Tonight, as we see the at least persistent rain last through the evening, cold front will arrive as we head towards 10, 11 o'clock. We get a little bit of a break. It's not going to last very long. We're still going to be seeing that rain uh, at least in spots overnight. Tomorrow more breaks than what we're getting today, but they're still going to be peppered around some light showers, especially as we get into the afternoon. And then that system finally exits once we get into the midday hours on Wednesday. So more rain than not, I would guess uh, going through the next uh, really 48 plus hours as we go into Wednesday morning. 51 tonight, periods of rain and those winds picking up 15 to 25 miles an hour, gusting up to 40 at times. So definitely noticeable. We're probably gonna hit our high somewhere here around noon or the early afternoon, 
and then temperatures are actually going to be falling. So not much of a warm up between our lows and what we're expecting for highs. Numbers start crashing in the second half of this forecast. Once we get into the weekend, look at those lows Saturday, Sunday and Monday mid 30s. High temperatures barely hitting 50. So if you had any doubt, fall was here. That's a good reminder in the forecast. Karen. Thank you, Ben. Still ahead, in some cities, finding a public restroom can be really difficult. So a new app is working to solve that problem for a price. And a fairy tale proposal from a Hollywood hunk. The story behind this adorable post in Trending Stories when we come back. Hi, this is Lou. In today's Trending Stories, a new app is allowing New Yorkers to book a bathroom when nature calls. The app is called Rockaloo. It allows customers to get access to restrooms and restaurants, high end stores, and hair salons that are normally reserved for customers only. Users pay between 99 cents and almost $9 to reserve a bathroom for up to one hour. They get an e ticket, which then they show the staff to use the restroom. The creators call it the most unexpected VIP e ticket in town. Okay, I'm sorry. You get a <laughs> bathroom for an hour? That's kind of what kind of caught me off guard too. What are you too. doing in there? I don't know. And I would just be too embarrassed to be like, excuse me, I have a cutting the line. I have a reservation for, for bathroom. bathroom. I, I wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, a lot of people are talking about this guy, Justin Timberlake. Have you seen his big announcement? If not, take a look. Excuse me, sir, do you have the time? I was going to ask you, sir, if you have the time. I do have the time. You do have time? I do have time. You do have time? I do have time. You do have time? I do have time. You're doing the halftime show at the Super Bowl? You do have time! <laughs> I'm doing the halftime! <laughs> Yes, Timberlake is invited back to perform the Super Bowl halftime show, and you can watch the game and JT right here on Local 4 on February 4th. Lots of folks talking about that. Also, one of Hollywood's most eligible bachelors is off the market. Actor John Stamos has proposed to his girlfriend of two years. That's her, Caitlin McHugh. He announced the engagement on social media with this drawing. Take a look. It is the couple at Disneyland, and he wrote, I asked, she said yes and we lived happily ever after. Disneyland is apparently his favorite theme park and he edited a special film with highlights from The Little Mermaid to set up his proposal. Would you get married there if you had his money? Um, no. I, I mean, it's wonderful and magical for kids. I just don't <laughs> find it romantic, but, yeah. but some people do, it's okay. Pop star Katy Perry made one couple's wedding day even more memorable. Take a look at what happened during their reception. Perry did a concert in St. Louis over the weekend and apparently had some downtime. She found out about this reception and crashed the party. We're told she popped in at the end of the reception and danced with guests for about 10 minutes. That's pretty cool. I'd like it if she showed up. Yeah, dropping it like it's hot. Coming up, first and four, a new spin on yoga. We've showed you yoga with goats and now there's another reason to do your stretches down on the farm. We'll explain. Also, don't forget the Lions take on the Pittsburgh Steelers this weekend in prime time right here on Local 4. So can the Lions bounce back with a big win? The game kicks off 8.30 Sunday night. We're already talking about it. Meantime, here's a look at what Kevin Dietz is working on for tonight at 11. Classified documents unsealed and only the defenders have them. What the FBI found out in its investigation into the death of David Stojewski inside the Macomb County Jail. Deputies told the FBI they begged the medical staff to help Stojewski, but they got the impression the medical staff thought he was faking. Will the findings finally bring justice to the family? There must be change, and there must be justice for everyone. Has it brought change at the Macomb County Jail, where in-custody deaths are still sky high? Don't. Finally, first at four, you may have heard about beer yoga perhaps, or cat yoga and goat yoga. Well, now there is another twist. I'd like to try all three, <laughs> but uh, one instructor in Georgia is teaching yoga on horseback. Look at that. Her students actually ditch the yoga mats and do their stretches on the back of a horse. Instructors say working with horses is therapeutic, and they call the whole thing a calming experience that can help you manage stress better. This particular class was also a fundraiser 
for Save the Horses. But our own Karen Drew bucked the trend. Look she started this before it was cool. <laughs> now, when was this? This was the summer at Black River Horse Camp. Horse I did camp. a mother-daughter camp up in Croswell. And what's the move you're doing? Um, I'm not sure, but it was really hard. Like, you had to balance, and you're kind of scared you don't want to fall off a horse. It's but all it core, was, right? It is core, and it was therapeutic because you're really kind of trusting this large animal that you have no idea What's going to happen? What do you think the horse is thinking? He's like, get off What of are me. you doing? That's exactly. <laughs> but I was so proud I did it. I was like, I told our producer, you know I did this. Let's include it that in the newscast. Impressive. Impressive. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us for First at Four. We'll be back in a half hour for Local Four News at Five. Inside Edition's next.